What I'd like to do is take you on a cheese joy ride through my experiences with my guidelines. That's all I want is for you to have the best cheese experience possible. Heaven. We got one for Dean. We're at Cheese Boutique, Toronto. Roncis Fails, beautiful area. Today's a big day for Ryan Lindley from DeanBlundell.com. Here's the deal. He's a bit of a cheese guy. He's our food guy, food blogger, barbecue guy. He's a little bit of a sous chef, but he's really a cheese guy. And Cheese Boutique is the center of the cheese universe in this country. The world's oldest Parmesan. Ben Affleck's personal cheese collection is in this building. It's in here. But this isn't about Ben, and it's not about me. This is about Ryan. As we go through the center of the cheese universe here in Toronto, Cheese Boutique. Finally made it. There he is, Afro. Finally, here we go. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Yes, sir. From their humble beginnings in the Bloor West Village in Toronto, Cheese Boutique founders Heisen and Stella Pristine knew how to create lifelong customers, become their family. That's, that's not, perfect. I like one take. I'm like, yeah, that's so, fine. I figure. Yeah, I figure. exactly. It's yeah. about families coming in. I love that. Thank you. So that, that's my grandfather there on the far right. That's 1970. That is the old shop, of course, all right? Over here is still the old shop. That's 1997. So that's my dad there on the left smiling. That's my brother. A cool part about this place too, I mean, I think the, the most important and the coolest part is our clients and, and, and our clients make us who we are. And you know, it's funny, so my dad would serve the clients and you know when my dad got to a certain age where he had other responsibilities in the store I would then serve that same client now my niece is serving that client's children right and it's just like a generational thing that like I, I take a lot of pride in, in that where I always tell my staff I say look you're not just cutting cheese or slicing prosciutto we're a big part of people's lives. Right. You know, weddings. We're there. Our cheese is at their weddings. Ooh. Funerals. Like, good or bad, we have our food on people's table. And, like, that's so special to me. From the moment you pull up on Ripley Avenue, that small town market vibe takes over. And you instantly become aware of something unique and special that's happening here in the middle of Canada's largest city. You're going to want to put aside at least a few hours, and that probably won't even be enough. This place needs multiple visits, and make sure to wear comfortable shoes. With over 12,000 items spanning essentially an entire block of shops, what you need will be here, and you can guarantee it's going to be the best quality. This is far from your local cheese counter at the supermarket deli, and I'll say it again, unique is not a strong enough word to describe this Disneyland for foodies. Break that golden rule about shopping and come here hungry. Cheese Boutique has a world-class bodega on site that can help you recharge your batteries. Coffee, espresso, cappuccino, pastries and fresh-baked mm. goods. They've even got a deli counter where you can get a sandwich or a panini stocked with the items from inside the store. This place is self-sustaining. You could live here. I want to live here. The cheese is still the star of the show. With over 400 varieties of cheese from around the world, including over 100 of them from right here in Canada, you will quickly learn how Afrin Pristine became the youngest cheese master in the world. Yes, Billy, real quick, what, how important is drawing from all different cultures in your product? That's who we are. When you walk around here, we want you to feel like you're walking around a farmer's market in Europe. Yeah. Right? And for us, we're very heavy on the European side. Yeah. Because this is what we know. This is our background. I mean, with that said, we have rice wine vinegars and, you know, soy sauce from Japan. And, and you know, a lot of different Asian products and Southern American. I mean, we don't pigeonhole ourselves into just European stuff. But 
like you said, Dean, I think it's that's everything. Yeah. Our job is to find, source, and curate products. But you're introducing people to different cultures. Yeah, totally. Right? And, when, and, and, and when people walk in here and they walk out, if they have a smile on their face, that's my role in society. Yeah. We are suppliers of happiness. Yeah. And let's do that. I, you know what? I have not hey, been this I've happy been in months. Me. You come in here. Yeah. I want you to forget about everything else in the world. Forget about the stock market. Forget about, uh, you know, Pandemics, Who, and yeah, all that, everything. Yes. Yeah. I know it's October, but like it's Christmas. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. So like in retail, Try it's Christmas. Stay ahead of the game. Yeah. So all these beautiful panettones that we're bringing in from from Italy. Like I'm not talking like four or five cases. This is like nothing. They're we're everywhere. Literally thousands, thousands and thousands of different panettones. And when I say that we're not just a cheese store anymore, we're really not. Mustards. Okay? Yeah. Like 90 different kinds who's of mustards. Okay, so seriously, who's got the mustard bowl up here? Is it the whole family? Do you want to know? Do you want to know like something? Me, I got a mustard bowl all the time. I can't mustard. stand mustard. Seriously? What? No, I'm Italian. I grew up. We don't have mustard. We, we don't have mustard. No, we didn't have mustard in our sandwiches. We had olive oil and pesto. But, but no ketchup. But no ketchup. <laughs> oh, well, my mother's from Naples. It's San Marzano tomato or bust. Yeah. But but look, beyond what I like or I don't like, yeah. that's not the point. The Good. point is really, I want to give my customers a great mustard experience. Yes. And I want to give them options and varieties. We do our own too. So if you walk around the store and you see a label like this, this is our product we make. Okay, so we do like eight different kinds of mustards here. So. The way we look at it is that we are a 52-year brand yeah. that, you know, people trust. Trust is such a big thing with food. Oh, yeah. It's really everything. People want to know where their products are coming from. And when they see a lo that logo on here, they're going to trust what's inside that jar. And yeah. that's kind of why we've started doing a lot of our own products. And that's the unique thing about, about food retail. It's There's a romanticism yeah. about it, right? So people can easily get drawn in because people are so connected with their food. They yeah. want to know where it comes from. And, it, and it's been so important in the last few years to... Good food's not enough. It's, no. It's not yeah. enough. Right. There needs to be that background, that storytelling, that, that, that like, it's got to be entertaining. This is Sedetta. How long have you worked here now, Sedetta? 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. He's my student before. Oh, yeah? Yes. My buddy. Like, she taught, she was my first boss here at Cheese Wow. Remember? No. Yeah. What was he like when he was a kid? What was he like when he was a kid? Bit of a shit disturber. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how good I am, everybody. That's how good I am. This is unscripted. This is she didn't know she's gonna be on camera. So, and, and, and Sedetta's role here, I mean, amongst many things, she looks after all of our inventory, sources a lot of the products, fills up the shelf. Like, in like she is like, uh, uh, you know, if if Cheese Boutique's a football team, yeah, she is like our star wide receiver. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, I know this store better than my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have family in this country, but Mr. Pristine is my family. Everybody. I love you, Sadat. Thank you. Thank you. That's really sweet. And she means that. Of course, yeah. And you know, I mean, you, you feel it. Yeah. Like, you yeah. really do. Which is like, like when, so awesome. What, uh, when you make a cheese bowl, okay. Which and we're doing today. I'm going to show you. Yeah. You want it. It's like traveling through Europe. I mean, you want to choose from Italy, Holland, Spain, England, like all of this stuff, right? And oddly enough, I think our cheese counter represents Canada very well. We are people from all those countries. Right. And we're coming here with those ideals, with those cultures, with those traditions. That's what this place is about. It's like a cultural fondue pot. This cheese fondue pot. I'm gonna steal that. There you go. What a cheesy that. bastard. Yeah, that's so good. Just a cheesy bastard. Yeah, yeah. Empty, that's cheesy. Like jam, jam, jelly, like condiment. Jam, you know the difference between jelly and jam? Is here. Literally hundreds of condiments. Because right? I don't. Another amazing person, Selena. Hi. Hi. No, no, no. no. Ah, <laughs> Selena. <laughs> One very quick thing, Selena, how long have you worked here now? Forever. <laughs> Forever. No, how long? Forever. 
35 years. <laughs> Maybe 35 years. years. Wow. Oh, it must be a good blessed. place to I'm work. very blessed. Uh, you know, she hates the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Selena. Thank you. Okay, over here. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Salt. Oh, very important. Yeah. Like one of the most important components to any when, dish. When it crosses every culture. But look at all this. That's right? what I mean. Flaked salt, pink salt, black salt, like fleur de salt. Yeah, all of that. We also want to be known as the place to like find the the most obscure ingredient in a cookbook. Yeah. Right? Like we yeah. that's that's what we want people to discover here, right? Is like the thing you cannot find, but it's in that one cookbook. And you become the that that main source for the people. Ingredient place. First thing that first thing somebody thinks of, oh, cheese boutique. Oh, that. If that's the case, then I've done my job. Twelve thousand yeah, yeah, items. Yeah, twelve thousand. Twelve thousand items in a thousand different items. That's what I mean. So all the all the dairy, right? So beautiful, like all organic, like full fat grass fed butters and the yogurts. And you know, milk, everyday milk too, because we're also a bit of a, of a grocery store. I don't love using that word for us because I think we're a bit more specialized. Yeah. But like, we have everything you need. Eggs and butter and cream and I make my own fondue mix. I make my own mac and cheese blend, like like all this kind of stuff, right? right. We make our own butter as well. Oh, wow. Oh yeah, it's nonstop. Pâtés. So all that, I love pâtés. Same here. Like, Same. I'm like a fiend. Same. All like the different games, like wild boar, duck. My father-in-law, and I was never huge on it, but he introduced me, he's from Quebec, and he introduced me to Creton, Creton. and that was what it was, yeah. and, and that, that set it off for me, and as soon as you got the flavor of that, and you got the, the taste for that, then I moved into the liverwursts and the yeah, other yeah, pâtés. Yeah. Yeah. And then now it's it's an open market for me, I'll eat it all. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Creton is your gateway. Yeah. It's, it's your gateway into that stuff. So good. A lot more cheese. So much meat. Cured yeah, meats. Yeah, curated yeah, yeah. meats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, Woodward, uh, that's uh, that's from uh, where I live. Hamilton. Hamilton yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, cheese from everywhere. Let's go in here. Sure. So, like, this is my mom's tomato sauce. There you go. We're talking tomato oh, sauce. Oh, yeah. This is my mom's recipe, our, our label there. So, like, every... Like Italian kind of inspired condiments, so sure. <laughs> pestos, uh, tapenades, pickled vegetables, dried beans, whatever, all that. So we have like oh, three brands of dried pasta, and like every cut they do, we have over a hundred different cuts of dried pasta, which is yeah, like pretty cool. Every no cut kidding. you can imagine. Yeah, right. Risotto. Uh, you know, different rice and those kinds of products here. Fresh pasta as well. So we bring in a fresh pasta from Italy. Gnocchi, like these are amazing. Stuffed with buffalo mozzarella, cacio e pepe, uh, prosciutto tortellinis, ricotta and spinach, black truffle raviolis, all that. We definitely always had produce. I mean, we've had for decades. However, we've really like ramped it up and it's like a part of the business that we really focused on. Okay, yeah. this is Jess. Hi. Hi. All right. Jess, how long have you been here now? How long have you worked here? Seven years. Seven years, Jess. Seven years. All right, all the different herbs, beautiful lettuces, grapes. Joseph. Yes, sir. Say hi, Joseph. How are you? Hey, this Joseph. Is Joseph. Hello, this is our chef, Tiago, here. Hey, okay, guys. one of the hey, best guys. chefs I've ever worked with. Uh, Joseph. Uh, is our produce buyer. He's been doing this for 30 years or so. Or more, yeah. Wow. Yeah, since he was a kid. I know I look young, but I'm not. And, and like for us, um, local is a very important. So as much as we can, we support local farmers and buy as much local produce as possible. Mm -hmm. Look, unfortunately in you know November, I can't get Ontario strawberries. So we <laughs> got to go elsewhere for that. But as much as we can, we do have local. Soups, up. stocks, dips salads all that stuff so all of this okay thank you ladies for shopping with us by the way <laughs> appreciate it so all of this is supplied by, ev by everything you just walked through yeah. so our cooks and our chefs when they're going to make a caesar salad they're going to get all the ingredients from here we are our own biosphere and yeah we, and we supply ourselves right and i don't want to say it too loud but like this area is for the lazy people who don't want to do it themselves. <laughs> That's why we brought Dean. 
This is why we're here. That's why we brought Dean. Okay. You don't want to make guacamole. You don't want to do that. We'll do it for you. Do you cook? Do you, all the time. Yeah, do you love, like, like do you love? Love, love cooking. Is there stuff like you like to cook? Like I, you gravitate towards something? I, I'm, I'm really big with a crock pot. Great, not great with an inch pot. That's not how you do it. Love it. Food. Yeah. Um, very, very good with barbecue. Not as good as him. He's a pit master, so obviously he's really good. Um, I cook a ton of meat, a uh, ton of vegetables. We shop almost every day. Right. That's a, so important, right? Like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's that European mentality, right? Yeah, you go and you get a few things and yeah. you come back. My yeah. family's from, from Europe as well. Yeah. We moved here when I was like two years old. So Blundell is what? Is it German? English. English, is it? Very English. Yeah. Amazing. It's not like Germanic. It sounds a bit Germanic. No, I just look Germanic. Yeah, a little bit. And and act little... Germanic. Fair enough. With the side of English. So with the this side is the meaning. You're going to have to hold me up. Because right. I'm going to get weak in the knees here. Oh, that's Check that out. Check out the steaks. That's a tomahawk right there. Yep. Yeah. That's I know this. I know the cuts. If you ever want to make friends with uh, other guys and you don't have a hard time making friends, just talk it about. It feels me. like it's falling down on you because it's so cold. Right? It's water fed fridge, so it's the water that's cooling this room, not a fan. This is perfect for aging. And it's the oldest stuff is where, Eric? Top? On the bottom. So, oldest right stuff the is on the bottom. Going to the to the youngest stuff. We're, we're not cutting or butchering until it's minimum 40 days dry age. Right. This is also all Ontario grass-fed prime beef. So, prime is the highest grade. Yeah. The Canadian government yeah. is. That's what this is. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that there's a difference in the grading systems when you hear the U.S. Yes. grading system and the yeah. Canadian one. When you get a prime rib from the supermarket, it doesn't mean it's prime grade. No. That's just the name of the, the cut. So very you have well to be said. very, very careful when you're selecting meat and you're not you, getting overcharged. You don't need meat. No, I do. No, I do. I, I need you to validate. I need you to validate this. No, but isn't it? You true? said it very well. Like you guys, you said minimum, it minimum yeah. forty days. Minimum forty days. Like true forty days. Yeah, and yeah. other yeah. places yeah. like. They age the meat, but they age it in plastic bags. Yeah, yes. and yes. and and they, and they yes. also it does improve it somewhat, but this is hundred times better. Yeah, and it's only twenty one days usually yeah. in those twenty one yeah. and twenty eight days. All those guys bullshit artists. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Guys are just total meat bullshit artists. Yeah. Totally. They're this meat is heads. The real they're they're meat the real heads. Deal. Meat heads. Yeah. So, so all of this. So I call this organized rotting. Yeah, because that's kind of what it is. As you can see, it's like it's rotting. moldy. Now, come over here. Okay. So that right there is this right here trimmed, butchered, cut, and ready to go. And we do this cutting and butchering right here butchers. in front of you. We get a, a cut, like a, 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 a filet. And yes, it's tender, it's it melts in your mouth, but that flavor, that beef flavor, isn't in like the tough, like the brisket cuts, or the, right, like right. The, the sirloins yeah. and the, the, the ends. The, if, if you cook them properly, you're gonna get that flavor. I could see like there's a twinkle in your eye. Oh my god! I, I'm gonna. I told you, my, I'm getting weak in the knees yeah. in this room no. right now. So all the sausages we make, like no nitrates, no preservatives, old school, many different styles of sausages, hand crank. Hand crank like it's a like a, these guys like they hate when I give them sausage orders because it's <laughs> such a pain. that's a lot yeah, of work. I gave them a, a thousand in two days. A thousand, wow. yeah. yeah. We have the orders and we have the food truck. And yeah. Just, Holy Yeah, man. but it's man. fun making that shit though, isn't yeah. it? Hey, you crank it up. It's got its moments. Yeah. Uh, Dean, Dean, you tell me another store in the city that's playing this music right now no. while you shop for food. Maybe like a, sh a second-hand shoe store. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But no one's maybe. brave enough to play this in no, that store. No, we do. Yeah, it's because you don't, you, you love the music. You I love the music and, and this is, and this is like, 
want people to, you know, drive around in. In blue. So supply. we have, we have um, like bougie chips, right? Like no Doritos, like bougie eight dollar, nine dollar yeah. bags of chips that like are amazing and like, like what? I, whether it's a rare cheese or a rare bag of chips, that's our business. Right. Right? That's our job. Candy, chocolate. We have over 250 different kinds of chocolates. I'm going to have the biggest chocolate selection in Canada. That's a jelly Canada. belly distribution center you have here. This is like the best thing in all of cheese boutique. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. I, 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 would, just, I, I would have it. diabetes and would never leave oh, this spot. It's so good. Crushed pineapple, incredible. Oh, dude, pineapple's great. The best uh, jelly yeah, belly rosé, rose, yeah. without question. Yeah. And I love how they said, hey, there's no booze in these jellies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just in case you feel like having a couple of I know, I know. Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, guys, yeah, th this is like confectionary. Yes. Like confectionary Sweet stuff section. and candy yeah. and like drinks. And we make our own uh, orange juice and grapefruit juice and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you, you, you like this. Okay. And then we'll try cheese. Yeah. So, Nora. It's a bit of a rush. I, I want cheese. We talked about the cheese master. Yes. Right? That's it right there. Oh, look at this. This is some Illuminati stuff right yeah, here. This no. is cheese Illuminati thing. This is like total, like, cloak and dagger, stonemason kind of thing of the cheese world. Excuse me. Right? Excuse me. Yeah. He's trying to tell me there's no cheese mafia today. Guess what? There's a cheese mafia. 2013, like you said there. Yeah. That's the, when I got the first, like, level, because there's different levels, right? That's 2009 I got it. My brother got the first level the same day I got, like, the the big daddy level there. Wow. And then, yeah, yeah. So what like, is this? Explain that to me. Explain what the Guild International de Fromageurs, uh, Mr. That's the Christine. That's the, you know, that's the, 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 the cheese, like, stone you're, mason. You, so you're, you're, like, you are basically... The youngest He's a Illuminati. The cheese mafia. It's Illuminati. The cheese Illuminati. Yeah, Illuminati. <laughs> so you, you're yeah. in the, you're in, like how many members are there? Fifty. 50. There's fifty only. Yeah. Or, yeah. Worldwide, you're the only guy in Canada. And the youngest. And the youngest. The youngest, the youngest? youngest to ever be inducted too. How yeah. many people in North America are? are There's three of us. So you're and you're it. Yeah. This guy is so famous in the world of cheese. It's unbelievable. <laughs> He's literally part of the cheese mafia. That's his fucking thing. <laughs> that's his thing. That's that's. Africa I'm not Steve. making it up. It's there. It's, it's wild. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, you cool. Where do you, you, can't, like, where do you get this? this? Where did they There's present this to you? Uh, so the first one it was in uh, Paris. Yeah, that they came here for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a big thing at Casa Loma. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. So you, they actually, the guild is in Paris. Paris. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So head head see that name, Roland Bar Bartholomew is like he's 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 the grand maître. Okay. So he's the grand master. There's All only right. one of them. And that's he's him. he yeah, and he's also like my mentor. Is wow. like one of the best cheese makers on the planet. And he like I, I train making cheese with him in Normandy. How long did you you train making cheese in Normandy? How long All did over. This, does this education take? How long does it take for you? I mean, it's still it's still going. Well, you right. you love I'm, the education yeah. portions of no, it. No, no, I love learning. learning. I know a lot about this, but like now it's just like honing my skills and like just like perfection is unattainable. But excellence is not. And like for me and what we're doing here, we're trying to be excellent. That's and correct. like and learning is like it's it's half the battle, right? Yeah. It's it's like it's it's, it's pride the of fun. purpose. You've got the pride and yeah. the purpose yeah. that you do, yeah. that's what you work for, pride and purpose. And then the best part is that I take that like that that learning and that education and then like I can like like just let other people know about it, right? Like Or use it to pick chicks up. <laughs> With a married. bread stick. I'm married happily. She's lovely. Back She's in the, the day. first lady of Fromage. <laughs> <laughs> She's the first lady of Fromage? Floff. F L O F. There's POTUS and all that. I created Floff. <laughs> She's Floff. Courtney is her name. She's amazing. Yeah, but when you come in and you She's start talking cheese, did your lovely wife go, okay, I get it. You know, she's pretty into guy. it. She is? Yeah, yeah. There, uh, there's moments where, there, where you know, she's like, okay. You'll be really? relaxing about a nice Guinness yeah, cheese. Yeah. And she'll be like, I get it, Mr. Yeah. Cheese. If, if she's also heard the song and dance like thousands of times. But like, she's also getting good at it. So like when she goes to like a party and like I'm not there and like people are coming to her. She's the first she's lady, repping, right? She's repping. She's repping, yeah, but like, like people want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's into it. She's very good. Yeah. She's way smarter than I. Right? So, okay, here's a question. Right out of shot out of left field. Tell me. Well, if you like it, great. If not, send it on back. What do you think of Cheese Whiz? Look, 
it there's a purpose for every single cheese item on the but planet. But do you look down on cheese? No, no, because that's the pretension part about food. No way. I got a jar in my fridge, bro, right what? now. What? Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Mark my words. I, I, there's nothing like going in there with yes. a spoon. And, no, for me, I don't look past that or down on it because no. also, as a child, as a kid, you want to have, you want to be introduced to craft Shingle or, you know, or a Cheese Whiz because if you can get excited about that, then come into my world and I will knock your socks off. It's the gateway. It's, it's, it's an introductory cheese. So you're saying cheese is a gateway? gateway. Yeah. yeah. Cheese Whiz is a gateway cheese? A gateway to better cheese. For me, it's, it's, there's, I don't look. I don't love every cheese because I have, a, I have a palate, right? I gravitate towards certain things, but I never look down upon any cheese. Here's another question. That was never. Uh, there, uh, okay, now you and I are different because I do look down on certain cheeses. Okay. I look down on the cheese that pretends it's a cheese when it's not. It's called head cheese. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> head cheese, do, you, do, you, do you guys know what head cheese is? So head cheese is, is you're like right though. Sweet, but it's not. No, do you know <laughs> what? Do you know what? When I was I have a kid, an, I'm offended by the people that make head cheese because they're bogeying the cheese part of the head. When when, <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, and you know I was working at the store. I'm like a like in my like I'm like 12 or 13, and I'm, and I'm helping my dad on the cheese counter. Yeah. And you know a customer, especially up on Bloor, where head cheese is like big and like. Germany and Austria and places like that. Like we had a lot of those customers and they're asking me for head cheese. I'm looking around the cheese counter and my dad would come and like slap me upside the head. And it's like, that's head cheese. Head cheese is made from different parts of typically pig. Okay. And like, but like it, it's, it's all the awful cuts. O F F A L. So it's like the butt, the ears, the nose, the brain, the it's all of it, the yeah. hot dogs. And they like blend it into like this like gelatinous, gelatinous mm. thing, and like you just slice it, and it's weird. Like it's <laughs> it's kind of weird. They put vinegar on it just to yeah. kind of kill the flavor. It's but like for some people, it's mother's milk. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pickled Tastes herring. It was more, for it was me, more head food. cheese and pickled herring. You ever had pickled oh, yeah. herring? Unfortunately. It's so disgusting. It's like a, it's like what you give to someone on a dare. Yeah. Where you're like, you should try this. Yeah. Like, what is it? Don't worry about yeah. it. Try it. it or, or like you go to like a black box, like chef's cooking competition. And like, I'm the jerk off that like puts in pickled herring. It's like, do something with that. <laughs> do something with that. What's, Follow me, guys. Want to try some cheese? Yeah, yeah, one, yeah, one more yeah. question. Okay. Sophie's choice. Yeah. You got to get rid of one cheese. Which one would it be? Like in the history? Yeah, like, 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 like something that... Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, after what I just said, there's one cheese that's like a bit of like kryptonite for me. It's Havarti. Havarti? Ooh, yeah. You don't like the Havarti? Havarti is like... I don't know. It's trying to be a Gouda. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like poor man's gouda. Havarti's got gouda envy. Yeah, it's just like Havarti, if, look, if we got rid of Havarti worldwide, yeah. except Denmark, alright, we'd be fine as human beings. Yeah. <laughs> Follow me here. This is, this is where it's at. This is where it's at right here. Come on in. Oh, I'd love to see Aflex cheese. Aflex cheese. Yes. Prosciutto's hanging from the ceiling. Like no. thousands this is, of legs. This is like a this is like a wet dream for me. Just so you're yeah, like, yeah. prosciutto falling from the and, sky and, and surrounded by cheese and like a, a creamy dream. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is Ben Affleck's cheese. That is all of his cheese. Why does he have a submarine of cheese? What's the deal? A Meghan Markle cheese. There's a Meghan Markle cheese in here. There's a backstory off record. A lot of my training, so so I trained from some of the best chefs and cheesemakers on the planet, and this is a lot of my training is more on the aging and ripening of cheese. Okay. So this is what we're doing in here, right? Like everything, there's a, about, uh, I want to say about a million and a half dollars of cheese in here. In Just cheese. Yeah, you have some celebrity cheese in here. Yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. The big guy right there behind you. That's me. No, who's, this? who's 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 that's, cheese is that's that? That's nine hundred pounds. That's the highest grade of provolone money can buy. It's about eight and a half feet tall. 
That's owned by Ben Affleck. Batman and so. Batman's, Batman's cheese. Yeah. We got Batman's cheese. It's kind here. of a long story. Is this cheese cave? Sorry. Is this the cheese cave? <laughs> cheese cave. Yeah. Yeah. Slash bat cave. Yeah. But th this is um, it's, it's kind of a long story. But during Tiff a few years ago, he found out that we had this, and he's a big lover of this. And his agent came in and paid for it. That that's like a fifty thousand dollar. So when we talk about aging, okay, and, yeah. and and people like think that like I, I you know. Look, cheese ages like humans, right? Yeah. We age one day at a time. So does cheese. These are living organisms. These are living and breathing. This will age. We're going to cut it at 15 years for him. It's halfway there now. Seven years now. Seven years. Like, think about that. Like, this, when it's done, is going to be older than some staff that work here. Yeah. Cheese is a personal thing. Oh, I okay. love cheese, but yes. I, don't, I don't have your education. But that's... But we agree, which means I'm basically like you. A hundred percent. And I think, Dean, the most important thing with cheese is that, look, I am not a pretentious guy. Believe me, I ain't. Like, I hate pretension when it comes to food. Yeah. Cheese is a personal thing. What I like to do is take you on a cheese joyride through my experiences with my guidelines. That's all I want is for you to have the best cheese experience possible. I ain't one to like ram down your throat. You have to do this and you have to do that. That's not my style. I think it's boring with food. Yeah. Food should be appreciated and it should yes. be fun. Yes, especially cheese. A hundred percent. It takes 750 liters of milk to make one wheel. 750 50 liters. Beyond just how tasty this is, the science behind it is like bananas. No kidding. And also, come look at this, okay? Feb, F-E-B, February 19. So this was produced in 2019 in the month of February. Okay. You see this D-O-P? D-O-P. Ah, uh, this is the same as the tomatoes, isn't it? Exactly. I knew it. So D-O-P <laughs> stands for, in Italian, the Denominazione Originale Protezione. Of course. It's, it, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what that stamp means. This is from the government of Italy. These are protected, much like champagne is in France. And San Marzano tomato. Yes. You cannot make this anywhere else in the world but one town in Italy. And you have to have the permission by the government to make this. Like, it's so hardcore. But it's how the cheese is made today has to be made the same way 100 years from now. And it had to be made the same way 100 years before. So how Prior. long have they been making that? It's Parmigiano Reggiano. How long have they been centuries? Making like that? That is a centuries and nothing old. Nothing. 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 What you have there has been happening you can, for fucking you, hundreds of years. You can take the guy or woman who makes this cheese. You, you, you can take them. You can take the milk from this town. You can take all the machinery, everything to make this cheese and do it here in Canada. And technically, you can do it. But it ain't Parmesan or John. <laughs> and that's what I think is beautiful about it, is that it's it's honorable. It's like tequila, it's like champagne, it's, it's like all those places that all the, exactly where, where the origin yeah, of the yeah. actual stuff yeah. it, it makes up the authenticity H of the actual history stuff. History is process so hasn't changed. History is so important with food. Oh, yeah. Like the biggest decisions made in Italian history were a whole bunch of people eating this cheese and discussing life and war and economics and all of this. But this was always the staple that was at that table. It's crazy. Yeah. So, 15 wheels here, okay? Okay. So, we get them in part of the DOP also is that it's aged in Italy, in Emilia Romagna, the region of where it comes from. It, it, it's aged here for 18 months by, by the law. Then after, the producer can sell it to whomever wants to pay for it. We bring it in, we age it, now it's gonna be, it's almost four years. We're cutting in the store almost four wheels a day, and those are about 100 pounds. Wow. That's one cheese. So we're cutting 400 pounds of this one cheese every day. Just cutting cheese because people just keep coming in for that Parmesan We're right? a busy that place, is yeah. As as it is. Yeah. That's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. In right? the world, and you have it here. You, you, uh, thousands of wheels. Thousands because I'm aging it for three years. I'm not buying one Did or two. Called you a cheese pimp 
<laughs> no, yeah. you're the first. Yeah. I like cheese Jedi. Cheese Jedi, you know, a bit, which, you know, which is that is a, uh, a deserved title because Jesus. you are a is it a maitre fromage, which perfectly said that <laughs> translates to cheese master. Cheese master, and you're and there's only what fifty of you in the entire world. Yeah. And you're the youngest person that was ever you're inducted. Good. You're good, yeah. And next year you're celebrating 10 years as a maitre formage. Well done. In February. It'll be February 19th, I, was 33. I believe. Jesus. That's why when I saw February 19th, oh, I, didn't even realize I thought, that. That, oh, we should cut there's that a ten, and honor that. There's right? a 10-year... I, I was the youngest in the world to get it. I was the only Canadian to get it. I'm very proud of that. That's and, good. like, I'm proud of that because... Like, I always wondered to myself, like, if my grandfather and father, like, thought we would, like, have that title, you know? And that ain't my title. That's our title. Right. And and that's something, like, very important to me. And and I got a show on the Food Network. You missed that. Uh, or were you no, getting I into didn't, that? I didn't miss that but, at all. But, like, all, like, <laughs> uh, like all these things, like, uh, uh, I'm very blessed. And it's the people who, like, worked prior to me, my family, yeah. that I've had these opportunities. Look. Like I said, that there's a million and a half dollars in this room alone. alone. This is like maybe 15, 20% of our inventory. Do you, do you think my dad could afford to do this 45 or 50 years ago? It started in a little fridge like, in the corner of a store. If, if he could buy, afford two wheels of brie, he was thrilled. Yeah. I get to play now. Like, like, like I get to have fun and I get to explore and I get to experiment. And, you know, this is where, you know, just because the cheese is older does not make it better. No. It's different. This cheese, the Parmigiano, you can come out in the store and buy it at three, five, and seven years. They're all different. It's like eating an apple and orange and a pear. It's the same cheese in three different ages. And they're just completely different cheeses, cheese experiences. Yeah. And that's the cool part about what we do, in my opinion. <laughs> Like, we do a lot of catering boards. Yeah. Uh, like, these are just... Just Sarah wait up. You. Your tray is ready. Uh, but, like, yeah, we do a lot of, like, tons. Literally hundreds and hundreds a week. And I do a lot of virtual classes. And these are kits here that you see in front of you. And, like... And yeah. you ship you ship all over. You yeah, ship everywhere, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, you do virtual oh, virtual, oh, virtual uh, classes, classes like up the yin yang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cra- like, yeah. You guys are so busy. Yeah, yeah, very. Like, there's a lot of different aspects to our business. Kind of like what I said earlier. But yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I live in here. That's why I wear a hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> bald would guys, too. bald guys like us, we get cold in here. I know. So, I would live here too. Yeah, yeah. Follow me. Follow me. It's gonna be hard pressed to get me out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pristine. This is the pristine family business, has been for 52 years. Cheese Boutique, ladies and gentlemen. We've done a total tour of the actual store. Yeah. It's been incredible. Was that fun? Incredible. Okay. Okay. This place is amazing. If you want to to make men around you happy and give them something to talk about, take them through a cheese wheel ball. I love it. And show them all you need. Done. No problem. I have never seen over a million dollars in cheese. The closest I've ever been is like the you know the fancy section of Fortinos, right? <laughs> you know, like that's like yeah. the fanciest, nicest cheese I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, but and it's just it's, so much of it, and it's it, and it's like it's it's art, it's science, it's all yes. of those things, right? Yes. It's culture, it's yes. all that stuff. So this has been an incredible tour, I but this is that. where it all comes together. Right? Well, but the, uh, uh, this and where it's all started, right? Like this whole you know my whole family business and all that. What we're talking about. This is it. Right. All right. So, now to have that. This is I mean, why you, know, you do it. This is why I do it, but you also need this. All right. This yeah. Is a total shameless plug for That's, my wine. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, I was hoping you would get that in. So, so, this is a wine I made and created with uh, Stratus Vineyards in Niagara. So, I love Niagara. My in laws are from Niagara and Port Colburn. Mm, nice. Niagara. Represent. And, and, and my dad always wanted to do something like this. And, um, you know, we ran out of time, and I wanted to do it for him. So this was really kind of a gift to my dad. Called Pristine Coupe. It's a 2019 Cabernet Franc. And in Ontario, I think we make Cab Franc very, very well. And it's a wine, like, like I wanted to, like, create a wine that pairs with this, right? With right. these specific cheeses uh, or these specific... Cheese and generic. Yeah, yes, yeah. Because, look... This is a Cab Franc. It's very like 
fresh and juicy and like nicely acidic. This is not the wine to have with steak or lamb. Right. This is the wine to have with like rich, stinky, fatty cheeses. Nice. All right. So maybe, some, maybe some maybe some prosciutto. Yeah, or for sure, for sure. Serrano look, look ham. Like old school corkscrew. Look at that. I'm old school. All right, gentlemen, or you guys. Let me know what you think. It's uh, it's uh, my 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 pride and joy is this wine, and we made 3,500 bottles. I'm gonna do another vintage as well, and uh, I am working. I will not. Oh, I will. you guys can have it for me, okay? Well, I guess but, we are too, but uh, I'll cheers you though, because that's okay. rude. Yeah, yeah that's super rude not to cheers. <laughs> like that's <laughs> what kind of jerk off am I? Like, cheers, guys. Cheers. To cheese, right? To cheese. Thank you to cheese, thank, thank, thank you for having us. Mm. Okay. So just like very fresh. Like mm. it's a nice like afternoon crushable wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could I could see many you know? I could see many headaches. You know it's, what I love about this is how cultured the whole thing has been. And then when we get to actually describing it, the, he still is himself. The, and yeah. He's like, it's a crushable wine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Totally. totally. All right. So I decided, like we talked about cultures and Europe and this, I, without Canada, my family doesn't exist. So I want to take you on a Canadian cheese tour. And we're going to go from East Coast to West. Yeah, I'm a proud Canadian. too. And like we're making world-class products. It's like, an, it's in a very exciting time. Oh yeah. Right now? All right. So this is a cross Canada selection. Yes, it is. Jeez, where are we starting? So we're going to start. I think we start in Ontario, okay. and let's start Niagara, right? right? Let's start Niagara. This is a cheese called Niagara Gold. You see how kind of golden that is? It looks like a yeah. slice of a potato. Yeah. Oh my God! I'm, just, I'm kind of glad you said that okay. because remember potato. Okay, I'm okay. Ready. Not yet, okay? But remember potato in like a moment. So, all right, please, guys, go ahead. Okay. This is going to pair perfectly with this wine. So, see how golden it is? Mm -hmm. That is the natural color of the milk. So this is made at Upper Canada Cheese Company. It's a dairy, one of the first ones in the, in the Niagara region. And it's uh, in Jordan, Ontario. And they're That's very delicious. famous for their, this very specific breed of cattle called the Guernsey cow. Mm. The Guernsey, Guernsey cow, I'm familiar with the Guernsey yeah. cows. So, so the Guernsey cow is like, you know, Mm, it's delicious. The the Tom Brady of cows. Is it the one with the hair? All the hair. Yes. Like yeah, my mom's. A They're beautiful. Very British, very beautiful. Scottish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like a Scottish Highlander. Yes. Or yes. Yeah. yeah. So, what? But what's very unique about this cattle is the milk. It's so good. That is the color of the milk. It's so golden, based off of its like genes and like how it digests yeah. grass. Like it's unbelievable. But you see how buttery it is. How old is this? Three months. Really? This is very young. young. <clears throat> and and in the cheese world, like this is probably, the, it's the second youngest cheese you're gonna try, but maybe the most flavorful. And it's like super like rich and buttery. Butter, yeah. And this is where, you, you know, it's not intense, it's just flavorful. But it's a full flavor. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yes. And it doesn't it doesn't dissipate. Right. But it doesn't hang around too long. Right. Am I on to something here? You're on to something perfect. Am I already the cheese master ha myself? Have another, you, you, do you know, speaking of the cheese master, I am at the title where I can indoctrinate someone at the lowest level. Guys, just saying. Hello. I know. I know. I'm in. Make me a cheese guy. It's I'm still in. early. Make it's me still a early guy. today. I'm it's still in. early. Cheese guy. How do I do this? Would you be so happy? You would I'd be, be the happiest guy in the world. I put it on all my business. I'll mm -hmm. get you a medal and everything. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, try it now with the wine, though. I just yeah. I just did. I took a, a bite, let it, and then I brought right. It. Okay. So oh my God. let's talk about just wine and cheese pairings as a whole in general. Yeah. A good wine and cheese pairing is like so. You eat the cheese. Oh, cheese is first, always. Okay, wow. you eat the cheese. Consume it, enjoy it, understand the flavor, see what it does to your palate, okay? Then you take the wine and do the exact same thing. Sit down, enjoy it. Now, you have the wine. If that cheese flavor creeps back, that's when you have a good pairing. If when it you comes do back that, after you've had a drink of your wine? Yes. All right, now I'm, at, now I'm paying attention, so okay. I'm gonna eat the cheese. Yes. When you don't taste that cheese flavor after the wine, 
the wine is just too much for the cheese. I see the cheese is still there. The cheese is still there after you have the wine. And here's the thing, it's not just there, it's made better. It is. It's oh, not it is so good. Cool. You, you, you guys, so aromatic that's such in your, good in your nose. Yeah, like you can smell your mouth. No, no, no. It's like you, you can smell that. your own breath, but it's a good thing this time. I'm 100% on it. Oh okay, okay, my god, that's so good. Because do you want to know why that is? Yes. One plus one equals three, actually, with this. The cheese on its own is lovely. The wine on its own is lovely. When you have the two together, they're creating a new, a new flavor. Yes. They're bringing together the best aspects of each other. It's like it's like umami. Totally. It's it's There's a lot the, happening. The sweet. You got the salty. The, the savory. The tangy. Yes. That. And it's, that. And it just develops. It comes together in your mouth. It's so good. Those two might be the best pairing of the day. It's going downhill from here, boys. The Ontario. Okay, so I'm we're sure in Ontario. We're, where are we going next? Well, we're going to go back to Ontario. Okay, but, but we're going to go to New Hamburg, Ontario. Down near Kitchener. Yeah. Okay. New Hamburg. Sorry, I'm sorry. Woodstock. It's Woodstock. Okay, so by London. We're going to go to New Hamburg in a moment. Okay. okay. But, 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 but we're in Woodstock here. Okay. So this is made at Guns Hill Dairy. And this is a perfect example of just brie. Why does the, why does the rind on this... Look like almost like icing compared to like the one we just ate, where it's a little more okay. uh, incredible question. So uh, also because it's a different cheese. Yeah, well, yes, Thanks. yes. Tips. I'm asking the pro. Okay, you didn't get your medal yet. I don't want to hear it. Oh my god. Come on, Tim. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let's look at this for a second. Okay, this is like perfect ripe brie. This is considered Come in here, get a shot of that. A bloomy rind cheese. So what the blooming rind? Blooming rind. Okay, so that's the difference, right? Yes. Now, what does that mean? This rind. You see that white kind of rind? This has bloomed from the inside of the cheese. This essentially is like two cheeses in one. So it's alive, like it's li completely okay. Now, not anymore because I've cut that wheel. Right. This is a. That's a full wheel. A full wheel of, of cheese is like a full bottle of wine. Okay. They're living, they're going to change, they're going to evolve. But as soon when, as you open it... This glass of wine is no longer aging. Neither is this piece of cheese. Okay. This is cow's milk. It's made at uh, Guns Hill Dairy. Guns Hill Dairy is like this like cult God. following of like people. It's out of this world, a family-run business. And please eat the rind. Please stop. Because this is an edible oh rind. And... I actually think it's quite important oh to it eat a rind. It it's completely it, it changes it changes the whole it gives thing it agree. it gives the cheese like a what I like to call a pleasant bitterness. Mm -hmm. And it's really unique because if you just have the inside of the cheese, this it's so great. Good. And it's all about the texture, but that also gives it like a bit of crunch. Yes, it does. Guys, I also This is so good. Oh bagel my chips. It's so bagel it's like chips it's got a bit of so these are I swear to god, this is what put cheese cheese with vegan business. Okay. These I bagel chips, yeah, go ahead. Do you spread free or do you just leave a chunk on a piece of bread? What's the what's the protocol? What's the thing to do? No, I wouldn't spread. You're not a spreader. Nah, just, You're just, a chunker. I'm a chunker. I'm a total chunker. This is what I've always wondered about, putting brie on crackers or bread. Nah, Do you chunk or spread? No, cream now cheeses, we know. like, like chunk. those down. You chunk. You chunk. You total chunk, because you want to like, chew it. Right? Yeah, you, mm. you want to feel it. Yeah. You want the texture, you, that is. Chunk it with the bagel chips. Now, what you were we saying, make. you are saying, the, 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 we, the foundation We've been making these for here? like 40 years. Really? Because yes. these are really, really good. Oh and, they're, and, they're, and they're sliced on a slicer, olive oil, rosemary, salt, pepper, baked. They're like oh the biggest pain in the butt to make, but they're amazing. They're worth every every yeah. ounce yeah. of effort, though. So what do you think of this so cheese? Good. Like it's, it's fantastic. Oh it's salty, it's, it's creamy. It's um, delicate though. Very, yeah, but it's it's not over. Like, it doesn't hit you in the face. Yes, it's a. But it's a. It's uh, it's very pronounced. It's a there. lot of like like very French good. brie's are like you know that like funky dirty sock kind of thing that people equate brie to. Right. This isn't that. It's cleaner. Mm -hmm. It's made with like very good quality milk, like all like organically mm -hmm. farmed. Like this, we're making amazing cheese. Okay, here. but this is the difference between here. Your cheese and everybody else's cheese, department store cheese, right? Yeah. The difference is, is that you know the difference between mass-produced cheese and artful cheese, yes. artful products. Yes. 
So the same rules don't apply to that breed that apply to like a, you know, no offense to a no frills breed. Uh, look, like this, they're cutting all the shit off of this as opposed to that making this cheese better. One hundred percent. Okay. And like I'm not here. I don't. For me, I I don't knock it. What other people do, but I will say this: this is a breed that is like still made with two hands. Yes. Yeah. If I order a hundred of these in a month. The dairy, who's a good friend of mine, the owner, his name is Shep, he'll maybe send me 20. Like, he can't make enough, which is like perfect. And you wanna know the other cool part? So, if I get 20 wheels of, of this breed a month, yeah. every one of them will look and taste slightly different. Yeah, really? and that's, yeah. The, that's the, the uniqueness yes. of artisanal handmade cheese. Yeah. And, oh wow. My dad, uh, my dad always said, I see beauty in blemishes. And when something isn't perfect, it's like, that's when it's like, great. Because if I got 20 wheels and they look identical, mm -hmm. that's when you start to ask questions. It's like, you're making this with two hands. Like, there's going to be some give, take, right? Like, yeah. that's kind of the cool part about something so real and something so organic. That that is the this, imperfections are part is of the beauty, perfect. Right? It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, right? So that's oh, Ontario oh, as well. That's on Bridget's stock? Brie. Bridget's Brie. Made at uh, um, Guns Hill Dairy. Amazing. It's Woodstock. In Woodstock. Woodstock. Woodstock, All right. Ontario. Now. Where are we going? Let's go to Prince Edward Island, everybody. Down East by. Okay. Let's get her done. Now, this is a good one. I want you yeah. to smell this before you eat it. Okay. And what do you smell? Think of what we talked about earlier. You smell not a lot potatoes by chance oh it is there's a starchy it's almost like a earthy wet, earthy yeah like a yeah 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 sorry the smell of whatever someone's cooking down there is so good that yeah, it's, it's, coming out <laughs> it's a little yeah, yeah, distracting yeah, i think right. i think we're making lasagna back there here smell oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. Smell this right time. very potatoey did you eat it it is it tastes like potato what yeah, is? Yeah. Well, what? Dude, and it's you know what it smells like. It smells like you know when you cut a potato. Yeah, that, that like before you cook it. Mm -hmm. That's what it smells. Yeah, like. that's I adore dark. you guys. Like I, you're my best students ever. Mm. Okay, apart from oysters, what is Prince Edward Island famous for? Potatoes. Slow drivers. <laughs> and slow drivers. And that long bridge. And long bridge. <laughs> guess what the cows are eating? Potatoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh potatoes. my yeah. God. So these. So this is made at a dairy called Cows Creamery. They're famous for their ice cream. They make butter and cheddar, and that is it. So this isn't like rolled around in a bunch of potatoes. This mm -hmm. is literally from the cow's milk, the, the, the transfer potatoes. of the flavor yeah. into the cow's milk. This yeah. is incredible. Do you want to know how cool cheese is? If a cheese, let's for this example, tastes oh, like really? potatoes. Try this. It's not that the potatoes were added into the milk and then the cheese was made. That's not the case. It's exactly what you said. This is the feed of the animal that translates into the diet, that translates into the milk, um, and that really gives you that flavor of the cheese. That's how magical cheese is. It, weirdly enough, comes from the ground. Milk comes oh. from the ground. Yeah, from what they eat. That is a two-year-old, cloth-bound, very traditional PEI cheddar. My wife is uh, Irish, so uh, she can confirm that the potato is present. It is absolutely present. Oh, okay. right. You know where the potato comes out? Am I crazy to assume? Because I just had it with the yeah. piece of the bagel. You can the potato is even more tense, intense, and not a bad intense with the cracker. Hundred yeah. percent. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. Right? The cracker is the vessel, right? Like memories. the cracker is the vessel to get it so from yeah, there it to there. One hundred percent. And this is the best part about pairing different foods with different wines mm -hmm. and all of that, right? Yeah. Guys, this is also the tip of the iceberg. And it's just like, when, um, when you start to like experiment and like what works what, like you uh, uh, you guys, Dean, uh, you said, I've never seen chocolate on the never, cheese. Never. Like that. Chocolate and hazelnuts and cheese is like the holy trinity of food. It's like, you know, this like symbiotic, like symphony, harmonic thing ever. Can you do me a favor? In the backpack, there's that red bag with those things inside. I want it to be a surprise. Okay, PEI. You know what's so good about this? Like, 
you can make the most like disco mashed potatoes you've ever had <laughs> oh with this. God. You shave that into oh, mashed yeah. potatoes. Is Game changer. No. So it good. It'll give it the stringiness and like the cheesy mm. flavor to it. Oh, I would eat that. You're a fucking hacker. <laughs> You're a cheese hacker. Yeah. I know. I'm like, yeah. Flavor hack. A flavor hacker. Okay. Where do we go next? All right. Oh, we'll save that for this. Okay. Oh, the Arkells. I love That's the Arkells. That's it. Same here. No. I'm actually friends with Max Kerman. Me too. Oh, nice. I love Max. Do you have a cheese here? No, but we're working on something, the two of us. As you should. Yeah, we are. All this right. intimidates me. So are we saving that for last? Yes. Okay, are you good. afraid of blue? A little bit, yeah. No, yeah. it's perfect. Okay. Oh, no, you know what? Maybe you can teach me. You know, Shots fired. Blue? He's petrified of a little bit. Like actually? Yeah. A oh little bit. God, you know so why? Because he's never had a mistake. But I'm, oh my mistake God. But race. I'm with it. But I'm with a pro. Yeah. Right? So um, I trust, yeah, I right trust you that okay. you're not going to kill me. Okay. So, Before we get to, uh, to, yeah. to the blue, now we're going to New Hamburg, Ontario. New Hamburg. And I'd like you to smell that one okay. as well, just before you, you uh, eat it. So, so now <clears throat> we're getting into Gouda. Or as the Dutch say, Gouda. Gouda. This is very pungent. Yeah, it's yes. got a, it's a, got a funk, like a but funky. Not, but not an offensive pungent. You know some no. cheeses like yes. offensively pungent? This is. And it's almost chocolatey yeah. pungent. Oh, yes. This is one of those cheeses, its bark is bigger than its bite. It's going to taste okay. completely different than how it smells. Totally. Right? Oh my God. For me, this is like salted butterscotch. Mm. Like chocolate. I got the butterscotch right there. The sweetness. As soon as you said it, I got it. You're like thinking about this cheese. This yeah. is what cheese does. It oh makes my you God. think. When you like get like all like Professor Xavier mm. cerebral about like cheese. Yes. That's what I do. That's what I'm doing. I know you. I could see it in your eyes. It's what like are you getting? What are you thinking about? There's a lot it's, going it's, on it's here. It's buttery. Yeah. Um, it's not as in a good way, it's more tart, not as smooth as the other buttery, you know, cheeses that you that we tried. The, the one from the Guernsey Cow from Niagara, right? The yes. other one from PEI. Yes. Uh, Brie, that's a different category, so whatever. But now I want to know what they what the cow's milk that, that, that makes this up and what what's the cow because that, that seems to be the biggest issue. This now, is the cow's diet. I'm so happy you said that because not in this case. This is all about the age. What's important here is not actually the quality of the milk or the breed of the cattle. Okay. From what we're talking about, you, look, you are uh, accurate in everything you're saying, but this is special because of the age. It's now, drier, is it because of the age? So, is that so why let's look at this. Do you, do you see these little dots here? You see that? Mm -hmm. That. And you can crunch on them, like, like, Come on in. like you can Get like that. feel them. What, see those little white dots? Yeah. People think that's salt. It's not salt. That's calcium buildup. Oh wow. The aging process. Yes. It calcifies. Over the time it. of aging, it's something in the technical cheese world. It's called tyrosine. That is tyrosine. That is calcium building up and forming. Pockets. It's like crystallized when you chew totally. it between your teeth. It's like exactly you, it. Yeah. And that is a visual sign that cheese has been properly matured and properly aged. Right there. You can crunch on that and feel it. And it gives the cheese texture. That's delicious. This is a lot of age talking. This is a four-year-old cheese. This is the oldest cheese we have here. One of the oldest we had in our cheese cave down there from New Hamburg, Ontario, Mountain Oak Farm a Dutch family, very kind of similar history to my family, but coming from Holland, mm -hmm. all they do is make Gouda. They don't make another cheese. They do this and they do it very well. And this for me is like their flagship cheese. It's aged four years. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's like so developed and like buttery and nutty and like tangy. salty and tangy and like- Umami. Tart. Umami. Yeah, so, very so, bit tart so much too. going on. <laughs> This it's is so a, good. This is an amazing cheese to grate onto pasta. And it hits you in the back of the throat. Yes. It's almost like, um, like grape juice. It yes. that to the back of your... The acidity. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what happens here now? Mm -hmm. So wait, you're going to grate this cheese on pasta, you're not using Parmesan. No. Use this. Game changer. No way. Because when you have pasta cake, 
and like a cream sauce. Okay. So you have a cream sauce and like you're like almost done, done your pasta and you like grate a whole bunch of this on top. The heat from the pasta blows this flavor up. So like what you're tasting right now, imagine applying the heat to it, the heat of the pasta and those flavor profiles you taste now will be like multiplied by four. And that's the thing with cheese, you don't want to eat this cold. You want to actually, the, Room more, the, more, the more warm it is, the, the more it opens up. I made the this flavor. the moment you guys got here. Really? Which was a few hours ago. Like this yeah. needs to breathe, it needs to open up. Eating a, eating a cheese, this cheese, as flavorful as it is, straight from the fridge, it will be mute in flavor. Mm. It won't taste, eating it. So it's like, well, it's uh, sure, wine. similar properties with wine. You wanna let it open up, breathe. Exactly. What's the process there? Give me the science. Honestly, it just, every flavor profile just is enhanced. The cheese needs to, where the cheese is consumed, okay, it needs to live in that environment mm. for a few hours. Do you know what I mean? Right from the fridge, it's just like you're tasting fridge. Yeah. Right? You're tasting cold. You're tasting temperature. I want to taste the cheese. Well, so and it's a I fat. Leave, it's yeah, a fat, yes, right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a fat. So you want it to kind of not melt, but relax. Yes. It, relax is a very good term. For me, so it's like, like for me, I, I, I refrigerate cheese like like at home. I, I actually really don't. Like this, I will leave out for 12 hours before I eat it. Are you um, serious? Yeah. Like that's where... So if you got people coming over, let's say 1 o'clock, baseball game, football game, yes. basketball game. Yes, the day you're before. entertaining the lads. The, you're going to cook that. The you're night before. Put that together and then just leave it out yeah. on the counter. Yeah. I'll let saran. I'll put saran wrap on it or something so like bugs don't get to it. But 100. percent I wouldn't trust myself. The cheese sweats. The cheese doesn't get the cheese sweats. Not when it's a proper cheese. Not when you're buying good quality cheese. It doesn't get the cheese sweats. My whole problem. I wouldn't trust myself. There wouldn't be anything left on the counter by the next day. That's. I just keep. I your keep problem, and by. it's a good one. Yeah, it is a great one. It's okay. Yeah. Do you guys have the chocolate yet? Or no. Yeah. Where yeah, are we going? Well, we're gonna have that with this. Are you ready for this? Chocolate and cheese. Oh my god. Okay. Listen, you're the pro. Chocolate, hazelnuts, and blue cheese. All right. You're a my, huge douchebag about the about the blue cheese. I am. You are. I really am. I just I just never I never you know why? Because I don't think I've ever had good blue cheese. Will you try this? One? Absolutely. That's why I said I'm 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 here with you. I'm with a pro. I trust you. I'm so surprised. Pro today. I'm waiting for the question from you guys that I get literally 15 times a day. How do we eat this? Because it's mold? No. Why are we eating mold? Is it mold? No. Afrim, what is your favorite cheese? Well, what that's your favorite. I do have a question. You're about to have that. Really? This is your favorite cheese? I crave and like fiend for blue cheese like like it's drugs. Like, look at that. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Look at like the for smell, me. the taste. Yeah. Is it I the, love the, the danger involved and uh, not maybe not like uh, I love cheese that like, like, grabs my taste buds like like just like grabs my taste buds and says let's go for a ride yeah. like like i love that and that's what this is this is organically farmed cow's milk cheese from fromagerie presbytere made just outside of drummondville so now we're in quebec it's so crumbly. very french influence well hello quebec it's very crumbly very fresh and fresh. do the cheese first and then the chocolate? Yes. Okay. And after, try it with the fig, fig jam. Okay. Try it on its own, I think is important. Each one of these has to be eaten on their own? In first succession, or do you combine them? Okay. I first have them on their own. Yeah. Understand what it's all about. Yeah. Then have it with the pairing. And you have the blue, the chocolate, and the wine mm -hmm. in that order. Come on. Just think. Just Relax. Wow. Let it live. What do you think? Honest. And like, I it's don't like want, what you said. I don't want I don't to hate love it. this no, just because I don't, I'm here. No, right? I don't hate it. But oh, you know what? So the flavors are there. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can that taste. so good. I swear to God, you can taste the cow. Like you can actually, you know that smell of a cow? Yeah. Not the, not the manure smell, but the, when you go into a barn when there's a he cow. Knows, he knows the manure the smell. The hay, the, the, I, I, like it's, it's hard to explain, but it's just oh so God. intense. Yes. It's so intense. Salty. Oh my God. Acidic. Yeah. 
tangy. Try it now with a bit of this too. Mm -hmm. Just like what you do. This is my dad's fig jam. Okay. Just a touch. Try that. Good Just, Lord. How good is that? How, like, See, with the this chocolate. This is why I'm here because this is shit I would never try when no. I'm home, but you've already figured this stuff out. Blue Elizabeth. This is honestly, for me, this is your cheese. Top five blue cheeses made on the planet. Like this for me is like in the Rock Four, like Stilton, which are like the two iconic blues of like all time. This is there. I like. I, I crave this cheese. Wow. See how flavorful it yeah. is. Now get a little bit of sweetness with it. That's what I just did with the big jam. And it's totally different. Totally different. It knocks it down a bit. Yes. It actually makes it a little more palatable for me. Yes. And you see, isn't so that? So many changes in my mouth isn't right it? now. For my mouth feels like a 14 year old boy. <laughs> wow. He's in a special file at the police station. This too, is great. Um, so many changes <laughs> <you> have. <laughs> <laughs> so blue cheese and a sweet jam like That's this so is like the adult version of peanut butter and jelly right i'm like, gonna try just, this on its own product. oh yeah so it's it's a it's like a transformer it's yes like a, yeah. yeah yes it's an autobot an enhancer yeah it, it is because you, you eat it on its own you know what you're eating and then you eat it with something else and it it's still there but it takes on a totally different flavor it's well, like one big. plus one makes three yes like, sir. Know, right <laughs> that's what it is you can you got that. it take it Ride it, like all just all one plus one equals three. That fits right in. Yeah, I'm 100%. And not give you a dime. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the I'm merch. totally okay with it. But now, so the blue cheese, the chocolate, and the wine. I think that might be a really cool combination too. See, this is my kind of dessert. I'm not into chocolate cake or like, no, you know, lemon meringue. Like when someone says dessert menu, I say you have a cheese menu. hundred percent. Yeah. Right? And you want to know why? For, or for me at least? Well, that too, but I got leftover red wine. I don't want lemon meringue with that. I want cheese. Cheese and, that's, and, and that's really, that, yeah, that's really, uh, that's really popular in France, right? Where they would, instead of a dessert, yeah. dessert they'll, do a cheese, they'll do a cheese, they'll do a cheese board afterwards. Oh, huge in England. England huge. as well. Huge. Huge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 where you're like, you've got yeah. a bunch of cheeses, but they'll yeah. do like peach. Pickled, pickled eggs, uh, all kinds of so really good. terrible I love that shit. Stuff. I love that stuff. Oh, I hate it. Really? Yeah. I love, I, I love, I think most of that shit was based on a dare. It was like, what do we have in the fridge that looks like we could eat it? And it was during Wild the war. Platter. Wildman's platter is one of the greatest though, isn't it? Oh, it everything on it. Variety. It's all, it's all about variety, right? The thing with blue cheese, well, and this is... On a tray. What, what, what food I'm, you're like... You know, I'm not sold on it, I don't think, but... Gonna be on my I understand the allure. I think when you're making a plowman's platter like that, like you gotta stick within a realm. I think it's like cheeses, meats, pates, pickled stuff, carrots or vegetables. I stay away from like fish when it comes to that boards like that, plowman's platter. Yeah, like no, yeah, smoked was... salmon. It's for another time. Yeah. That's for brunch. Yeah. Like have that at brunch. Yeah. A plowman's platter is just something like you destroy with a bottle of wine. It's just like, it's gone. <laughs> like, gone. The thing with blue cheese, and like it's easily it's the it's the cilantro of the cheese world. It's yeah, the most sure polarizing is. of you know mm. you, you 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 love it or you do hate it. And I think it's just on, like honestly being exposed to something different. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to love it right for my the mouth. sake of loving it. If you say you know what that's interesting, literally that's everything on this cheese. That's track. that's a good way to put it. I don't hate it. Can but be made better. Love. Right. Or different but it is and equally as good really by something else on the cheese tray. Like that. And that's, that's not how we what I here. thought blue cheese was. We learn. We're learning about it. Dan is only cheese master. No. App from Pristine. Really? Ranch. I'm the ranch At guy. I'm the guy that says I want a cup of ranch. Tea. We call it fat guy. And, and, and you know what else I'm a fat guy? Right? You know, we were one of the only places you could go yeah. to. So instead of going like King Street to a club, you came to the cheese with <laughs> the You did. Did you? Groups of two only, yeah. right? <laughs> Six feet apart. Nice. But this yeah. is where people came for a night out. You could, you could, you could, you could, you could take a date here. You could literally take a date oh, here. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. you would be here for hours. Yes. I don't know how this started. Okay. Right. But like, it was a 
just pre-pandemic, Sunday was the day. I'm not making this up, okay? I'm not, no, no, I'm not making this up. If you had a baguette in your hand no on a Sunday intended. afternoon, are you serious? I'm not I was making the, this up. So you this heard it like here. You come you to the like cheese the boutique the head. and you hold a baguette on Sunday. It, was it means you're good to go. No. 